Hey man, talk to me about um, the art of pad holding. Because these, I mean, for somebody who's not really sure what they're seeing, this looks kind of, I don't know, like, what, what is it? Like, you're just holding it up. Is that it? Well, what you see, yeah, you just hold it up. You get, <laughs> you're giving a realistic environment for the person in front of you to, to learn how to fight. And I think it's very important for, for martial artists who do striking to hit different types of equipment. If you hit a heavy bag, it develops a different type of feel than if you had a focus mitt or if you had a tie pad or double tie pad, if you're hitting a kick shield or even with your sparring. So mixing up the different types of equipment gives you the ability to build attributes in different ways. Focus mitts, for example, are just that, for focus. It's for targeting. It's for making sure that you can hit the target. It doesn't matter how hard you hit. If you hit the wrong thing in the punching environment, if he swings a right hand at me and he hits my shoulder, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage, right? But if he can hit this button right here, he can put me to sleep, he can end the fight quickly. So a focus mitt, not necessarily for the power aspect of it, but it's for being able to hit the intended target so you don't have to be in the fight longer than you have to. Right on. And you know what? Uh, from my personal experience, when I see good pad holder along with like a professional striker, it always seems so like awesome, right? Here, I mean, Eli, you, you missed some cues. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I misread a couple of things that because uh, uh, you know I'm I used to double pad holding, so I'm learning a lot from Buck just right now, and he's showing me these different cues. So I'm having to readjust a few things, and I, I think that's good because um, if I, that shows me that sometimes people, even somebody that's done a lot of pad work, and I've done quite a bit, I can still get kind of uh, settled into ruts. And if if I mistake a target or whatever, and I have to adjust on the fly, then that's developing attributes in me. So I think this is good. I mean, like he's saying, change it up a little bit. You know, get the person used to kind of identifying some different openings and uh, keep things fun you know he, he brushed over that but that's such a huge part of it man is keeping things fun and entertaining that's why we're doing this and that's what's gonna keep us doing it you know Buck psychologically as well when he missed a cue he didn't punch how he was supposed to I'm putting air quotes Quote right there. you didn't break down and you didn't go that's not what I wanted you went along with it and you said it's okay yeah fighting is 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 the art of like ad-libbing, interpreting, fixing, correcting on the fly and continuing to move. You don't get do-overs in fights and real fights are going to be a little bit messy, a little bit sloppy, but the hallmark of a good fighter is one that can make a mistake and continue to fight. Um, you don't get a do-over. So if he misses a jab, for example, he can't fall apart. He's got to get right back to the fight. If I'm setting that proper fighting environment, I have to stay strong for him too. So if I see a quote-unquote mess up, I've got to keep him in the moment. I've got to keep the pockets up. I've got to keep the pad up so that he can stay in the fight and he can learn how to continue to move. Man, this is a very, very thoughtful approach to just this one element of um, pad holding. I hope people appreciate this because we could have just made this look pretty. I mean, you guys had no preparation. You're like, hey, this is what I want to do. <laughs> you just went right. To yeah, it. there was okay. no warm up. Yeah, it's okay to make mistakes. Right? Yeah, and here's the thing: like even with mitt work, I think mitt work is it should be fun, it should be exciting, but it should also be functional. One of my pet peeves for like mitt work is smothering the pad holder, right? What's and that you, mean? So um, I call this the Maywe Mayweather hit shit, right? <laughs> the Mayweather hit shit. You see something, he's throwing a, he throws a, a one-two combo. He's a one-two three. He goes one-two three two. <laughs> right? It's real pretty, real flashy. He's punching like a T-Rex. Unless I run into his punch. Now there's some validity with like short chain punching, right? Being able to hit me from here, it's a pretty good skill. But what ends up happening when people do this stuff is that when they get into a fight, they fall apart. Because now they have to go get the target, right? The target's not gonna jump out in front of them, right? So when I give him a target here and I hold it here, he has to come get it. If he really wants, he's got to come get it, right? If I turn here, he's got to go get that target. He gets a realistic understanding of the range that has to be covered in a real fighting environment. And I've had professional fighters who look really good on mitts fall apart during these drills because they're so used to the pat work where the pat holder is doing most of the work. If I'm in here, you throw a one, two, three, two. I'm doing most of the work right here. He's not doing any of the work. He's move, moving, he's making sounds, but he's not really learning how to fight. So we've got to increase that bubble, give a realistic distance. He wants to hit me as soon as he can, which means he's got to come get it. If he wants it, just like any fight, he's got to come get it. Buck, thank you for being so thoughtful about this. this and it sounds like a thing I this for my sister, my wife and my kids. Yeah, I mean, pad work in itself within Muay Thai or boxing is an art within the art. This is why in our instructor training for the Muay Thai University, we spend an entire week 
on just the pad work alone, uh, which is why it's important when you're like training people to like start off, start them off where they're at. Single mitt work can be advanced work. It could also be beginner work. I don't let any of my beginner students do double mitt work ever. Single mitt work is the way to go because now me as the pad holder, I only have to worry about one thing at a time. Meanwhile, the person here can get some work in. We can both get some work in and I can develop my skills over time to be a better double pad holder. Thank you so much. Thank you. Eli, Eli, thank you also. I do this for you. I do this for my sister, my wife and my kids because they part of the team. I do this for you. all the naysayers and haters who made me one of the greatest. I know it kills you inside. That's why I do this for you.